Okay, this time we are going to look at a couple more functions as well as snapping. Um, in this case I've already set up a file with uh, uh, some, some lines in it that I'm going to just use for construction purposes. Um, we looked at um, insert line last time. So there's a couple of just really basic insert uh, insert functions. Um, we already looked at insert line. This time we are going to look at insert fly line, which uh, if we bring up the, uh, the help screen, uh, insert fly line is basically a streaming digitize line mode. So I move the cursor along and everywhere that I uh, just drag the cursor um, it's it's going to be collecting a buffer of points and then it will save points out of the buffer based on certain uh, certain parameters. So if we look at the help page, um, there's a couple things that we want to pay attention to. Uh, one is called the tube radius and one is called the maximum tube distance. And it very well could be that the uh, the best way to show this is to just give some examples. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our uh, our practice file. And so I've got these little boxes that I've drawn, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mouse to inscribe a circle inside the box. Now, uh, while I'm doing this, uh, I'm just working with the, uh, with the system mouse. Um, I'm not worried about appearance, uh, the, the, the scale of anything. I'm just going to try to inscribe a mouse or inscribe a circle, and it is going to be fairly nasty looking, but uh, let's go ahead and start insert fly line. And there are two menu key layouts. Uh, I, this goes back maybe decades, and I don't even remember why there are two. One is called the VR and one is called the old layout. Uh, for whatever reason, back in the day, we decided to use the uh, the old layout. So if we look at the uh, uh, the help page, um, at some point it's going to uh, look at button assignments. So insert fly line main. Those are the uh, the main button assignments. But while it's in stream mode, uh, notice that you can force digitize a point. Uh, you can end the line, you can digitize manually, and the button layouts are different. Again, I don't even remember why. I believe that we decided to stick with the old style layout because at the time we'd been using the previous software for decades and just decided to uh, to keep it like that. So. Insert fly. These are the uh, key ins that are available. We'll see how those change things. Um, but let's let's just go ahead. So I've started a um, I have started insert fly line, and I am going to uh, in order to change the colors of the lines as I'm digitizing. Uh, I'm going to change the layers because I've got a uh, I've got a set of layers that I know just cycle through primary colors. So down in the bottom status area, the two most important things are the tube width and the max distance. And uh, these these are so important that I actually set up macros. So if we watch that, uh, this is the default for whatever reason, whatever scale map it, uh, this was set up for. Um, you can see that the tube width is 0 0.025 and that is in map inches. I believe I have this file set to 100 foot to the inch. So the tube width would be um, 
for this one two and a half feet. Uh, the max distance 0.15 in map inches, uh, so that would be 15 feet a maximum distance. So, in theory, any wiggling um, inside of a, uh, a, a 2.5 tube and a, a maximum distance of 15 feet, it's going to buffer point. So let's just go ahead and start, and you can see that it's the uh, tentative line buffers a lot of points and I'm doing this with the mouse just to keep it pretty ugly so that you can see that there are a lot of wiggles and jiggles in there um, I don't even know I don't know how big this box even is uh, but so when I get to the end I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit uh, button 2 to close it and end it and you can see that within those wiggles and jiggles, those are out of the tentative point buffer. Those are the points that got stored. How do the parameters affect this? Well, let's do a, uh, a tube width. And again, I uh, see T-U-B-W-I-D equals... Um, Point one, so that's going to be a 10-foot tube buffer that it's going to work in. Let's change the layer, change the color, and go ahead and uh, ever so carefully inscribe uh, another circle. In this case, the buffer should be larger. And so you can see that even more of those little wiggles and jiggles got taken off, but there are still points being digitized. That is coming from the maximum distance. Let's change the tube width one more time, make it really large. And inscribe another circle and I'm not since I'm not sure of the scale I think we're probably going to get about the same number of points because it's primarily going by the maximum distance if I uh, actually let's undo that and let's make the tube width very small This time, as we digitize, same max distance, lots more points because the tube width is set much smaller. So the tube width is basically constructing a tube bound, bound, um, bounding that tentative buffer. So if you picture that uh, whatever that, you know, in this case it's a one foot tube, bounding that buffer all the way around, every time that a point breaks out of that buffer, it's going to store the point in that, in that tentative line. Um, how does the max distance affect this? Well, let's go ahead and do a, um, so if we go back here, this was a tube width of a tube width of 0.2 or uh, 20 feet actually. Um, but let's do a, uh, so we've got a tube width of 20 feet. So a lot of points are going to get eliminated except Let's tell it to not allow going more than five feet without storing a point. So, um, again, very large tube width, very small max distance. Let's go ahead and draw that. These are getting more and more like diamonds every time. 
So now we can see that even though the tube width was very large, the point spacing is very consistent. So what would it look like if I did a, uh, a very small tube width? And in this case, we're going to say, um, let's go ahead and say half a foot. So a lot of the little wiggles and jiggles are going to get saved. So this was a, um, a large tube with a small max distance. Let's go with a small tube width and a large max distance, um, half an inch or 50 feet. So let's just do try to do as closely as possible the same line with so if I take this line and move it over here this was a very small tube width so the wiggles and jiggles but where it did happen to go straight it just didn't, um, it did not store any points because I'm allowing it to go a long distance. So the, the correlation between tube width, max distance, uh, that w most function keys that we use just set that as, as a default for the particular map scale. So when I'm doing things like a, uh, a, uh, a winding stream or a ditch or a break line, um, or a, a fairly poorly defined uh, driveway where I'm not using point-to-point -point mode. Um, the, uh, the tube width and max disk are going to be set. But it is not unusual to be working and think, well, here's a line where I'm more concerned about getting points on an even spacing. I'm not concerned about the little the little wiggles and jiggles. So in that case, I would set a large tube width and a small or required max distance, and I would get ignore I would ignore a lot of the little wiggles with the tube width, and it would store points at a regular interval based on the max distance. Uh, if I had a, a very wiggly line, let's say uh, uh, a stream running through the woods, and I was concerned about a lot of the little details, but not so concerned that if there was a straight patch or a straight part of the line that I get a lot of points, I might set a small tube width a longer max distance, it would catch all the little variations, but if there was a straight segment, it would just um, put fewer points because less would be necessary in the straight segment. A uh, couple other things here. Um, let's go ahead and um, uh, we are, uh, let's go back to a, uh, uh, let's just stick with that, that nice uh, cyan line and I'm just going to do some digitizing so I'm going to start my line and let's see in this case uh, we wanted a um, a tube width of, of a reasonable size and a max distance and actually I'm just going to I'm going to see I think I've got a uh, a macro that if I say MD for max distance space and put a number the macro says set the maximum distance with a zero point and then it takes the uh, the number and puts it in so if I say MD because I do this so often if I say MD1 it sets the max distance to point 
one. So let's just say these are reasonable for par reasonable parameters, and if I digitize something and I don't know what it is, it's going to give me a reasonable number of points, picking up some of the some of the wiggles um, and the max distance that gives me a certain number of points. I, I'm not concerned about that right now because what I want to do is I want to attach to a point. So look over here, uh, button number five is attach. So if I hit button number five, the first thing it's going to do is ask me for a search point. I'm going to get near the line I want to attach to. It's going to give me a tentative attachment. So then when I hit accept, it's going to be in the digitizing mode. And here, this is a highly detailed line. So you can see that as it broke out of that tube, it stored a lot of points. So things like attaching. Uh, another thing is, let's go ahead and start a line. And I've got this, you know, a very detailed, wiggly line. And, oh, I came to a section that is very uh, straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to manual mode. I'm going to hit button number five. And at this point, it's only going to take points where I manually digitize them. At any point while I'm doing this, I can hit resume and go back into my streaming fly line mode. And if I want to end it, I just, in this key layout, I would hit button number one. If I want to close it and end it, I would hit button number two. So you can see where I was using the fly line mode. Uh, that went in very nicely where I was digitizing points manually, uh, where I attached. Um, let's go back to parameters uh, for digitizing. And these are all key ins, but you know, I always say when you're practicing, always hit button seven to bring up the, uh, the parameters. And we'll see that one of the parameters is when I am attaching, do I want a, um, uh, do I want a node on the point that I'm attaching to? I said, yes. Uh, the question was, Another thing was when I attach to something, where does the Z come from? Uh, is it where the cursor was when I hit attach? Uh, does it going to average where the cursor was and the, uh, the line that's already there? Is it going to take from line one? Line one is the, is the object I'm working on. Uh, in this case, the, the, the fly line. So uh, basically, line one is always this. Uh, if I'm in insert line, I'm about to start a line. I'm about to start this line. So if I node, where would both elevations come from? It would come from where the cursor is. Or in this case, I have it set to from line two. So that means when I attach, I do the tentative attachment point. It's going to snap to the line. It's going to grab an interpolated Z. It's going to force a new node point on the already existing line. It's going to force the Z on both points to that interpolated point. And it's going to go on from there. All right, so we can get out of that. That's just uh, some of the parameters. All those parameters need to be looked at as you're working. Some are more important than others. Um, always check the parameters. Always try the different buttons. Always try the different parameters and see how they affect things. Um, the next thing, we're just going to look at 
briefly is insert symbol. Uh, and in this case, we have an overloaded function key for insert symbol. Um, let's go ahead and start the uh, uh, button 7 for parameters. And let's go ahead and just for the fun of it, let's change the symbol graphics to just a simple circle. That one is um, button, or I'm sorry, 21. So this is just a graphic way of selecting a symbol. Okay, it just changed that graphic to 21. So let's go in here and we can see that insert symbol has started. If we look down on the status line, it is a one point symbol. The symbol rotation key in or uh, digitization is off. And is it going to ask me for an elevation when I store it? No. The only time you'd want to use this is if you're digitizing an existing map and doing spot elevations, something like that, where you digitize a symbol. Uh, you're just digitizing in 2D mode but you want it to force an elevation after you hit the button. Uh, you can hit the button, it'll ask for a Z, it'll force that Z onto the symbol. Uh, very rarely used unless you're digitizing existing maps. Um, so it's j almost always turned off. But um, let's um, go ahead and just digitize a symbol. So um, button one, we'll digitize that symbol since it's in, in one point mode. It's whatever's, whatever the parameters are set to when I hit button number one. And as many times as I do that, uh, or let's just do, uh, let's undo the last three of those. All right. Um, so one point symbol. A two-point symbol is going to allow me, and uh, notice that button number two is increment the number of points. So let's say that we're going to digitize a circle inside here, um, just guessing at the uh, closest point to the center. So I'm going to go to two-point circle. Button number two is going to increment that. Uh, now. I have no radius because I have not digitized anything. I just have a tentative point placement. So it's going to ask me to digitize the first point, And then the second point is going to be the radius of the circle. So it will digitize one point in the center and then drag out the radius. Um, if at any point I want to abandon, here's a little uh, a little tip. If I say, um, oh, I want a three-point circle, it will abandon what has been read, and now it's going to digitize a three-point circle. Oh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to start one there either. If I abandon that, uh, it's going to go to one-point circle, but holding that radius. If I toggle the number of points again, so every time I change the number of points mid digitizing, it, it I kind of think of it this way: it's like, well, okay, I don't know which point you wanted, I don't know how many you wanted. We're just going to kind of go back to the beginning. So every time I cycle points, and we can see down in the status area the number of points that it's expecting. Any time I go to one point symbol, it's going to use the last radius that was created. Uh, if I go to two point circle, it's going to start with the center and drag out a radius. While I have that radius dragged out, I can cycle. And now it's going to keep that radius, but go to one point symbol. If I toggle three point symbols, 
it's going to ask for three points on the perimeter and store a symbol based on those three points on the perimeter. If I toggle to one point now, it's going to use that last radius. If I toggle to two point, it's always going to ask for a center and a radius. Uh, let's go ahead and change to something that is more directional than a circle. Uh, let's look at something like an LP tank. So my LP tank has a certain orientation. Uh, the last thing I was doing was a two-point circle, or I'm sorry, a two-point symbol. So if I do a two-point symbol, I digitize the center, and I digitize the radius, and there's my LP tank at that particular radius. However, that LP tank might also be oriented in a certain direction. I have the size, so I can toggle to one point symbol, so they're all going to be that size, but if I look at the keys and say toggle rotation, at this point let's toggle the rotation and I digitize the first point, the center, and then I can set the rotation. If I do a two-point symbol with rotation on, I digitize the center, and then I drag out to a point that would identify both the size and the rotation of that symbol. Uh, always, whenever practicing, whenever working with a new function, button number seven is going to bring up the parameters. You can see the kinds of things that can be set while digitizing. And um, always look at all the buttons and try all the buttons see what they do uh, combined with the parameters uh, and the buttons that is going to combine to create the environment that we are working in um, was going to get to snapping a little bit but um, simple as these insert routines are. Uh, the video has gone longer than I cared for it to, so snapping is going to be the next thing. Uh, just as an example of something, um, I know that everything that, uh, uh, that I have done here. Uh, you know, if I want to undo some of those things, I can say undo, and let's just pick a number, say undo the last five things. The last five things should have been symbols. So uh, it, it did, or it undid this. Actually, those were digitized into a layer that was turned off. So the graphics were displayed, but the layer was off, so when I did a replot, uh, so I did the undo, I undid some of those things, but now when I turn the layer back on, I can see that some of those things are still there, which is fine. Just wanted to give an example of undoing some things. Uh, if for some reason I wanted to read, I undid those things with a layer that was turned off, I didn't actually get what I wanted. Oh no. Um, I, di I erased some things that I actually wanted. Well, let's. I did an undo five. Let's do a redo five. And actually, redo might just do things one at a time. I thought that took an argument. Maybe it doesn't. Um, but I can redo things back through the buffer 
of things that were undone. Redo only works immediately after undo. So I digitized something, I stored it, it was good, I accidentally hit undo or the macro U, just hit the keyboard. Oh no, I undid that very complex line. Immediately I can say redo and it will step back through the undo buffer. Uh, weird, weird idea, weird concept, something to play around with. Um, but given that, you know, the, uh, that kind of layer on, layer off thing, let's, um, I'm going to get rid of all of this junk that I have put in. I'm going to turn off layer 100 because I know that's where those boxes are. I'm going to do a delete window because I want to delete everything that falls inside this window. It has to fall entirely inside the window. Now notice here, this is a symbol. It has a point right there. I'm going to draw a box where that symbol center falls inside the box, but this line down here does not. My prediction is that the line will remain, the symbol will disappear. It is tentatively showing me everything that is going to be erased. That's fine. That's what I wanted to do. If I wanted to do this, I could do this window. Tentative? No, let's not do it that way. Let's go to Fast Delete. And I've got macros for all these things, but let's type the command. Fast Delete. It is searching for lines. I identify and accept what it found. Fast Delete is for one entity at a time. So just at the end there, just a, a tiny bit of referencing to layers, turning layers on and off. Uh, I'm going to leave these lines here because I'm going to use that for use those for something when I am doing snapping. But that will do for inserting fly, inserting fly line, inserting symbols, and just a little bit of uh, attach and layer manipulation.